how consistent she can be at giving them the right location and the right tempo is going to be huge for them. Meanwhile, for Georgia, they ask a lot of Casey Evans. She carries a huge load. She sure does, and she's had to go through quarantine something like three times in six months. But when she gets her game to the highest level, they can challenge anybody in this conference. And Casey Evans is leading them in kills per set. Tom Black told us she is back at that good level that she has been playing at after missing opening weekend due to one of those quarantining sessions. But they will need her and she will need some help tonight to take down a Kentucky team who is ninth in the nation in hitting percentage. There's Emma Grome. She'll go behind to Reagan Rutherford, the opposite, and she's able to tool the block. That's one of those attackers, we call them pin attackers, people who hit close to or from close to the sidelines. And um, she located that one very well. She's got four great pin hitters to, to work with. So Kentucky with all kinds of possibilities as this season winds down. Kentucky not only had to replace its setter, they had to replace Gabby Curry at the Libero spot, and Eleanor Bevan is the one in that Libero jersey who has earned that spot, another true freshman. Ali Stumler on the outside. Yeah, well timed, Courtney. She comes up with the dig, just as you mentioned, Evans. <laughs> and then, and then you also see the termination factor. Uh, that time, Ali Stumler anticipating an inside set, and getting her feet to the ball nicely. Yeah, Ali Stumler, a first-team All-American, a key piece in returning. And if you just watch her play, just a few points, you're going to know that she's an elite volleyball player. You're right. We were talking about it before the game. She's one of our most favorite players in, in this match just because she does everything well. And I love the all-around volleyball player. That's what we need at the and look for at the next level with the USA team. So to be able to stay on the court full time and do that, Ali Stumler is a great example. And there she goes again. Stumler number 17 in white for Kentucky. And she's listed as at only 6-1, but that shot she hit a number of times in the NCAA tournament last spring and even in the title match against Texas when they won their first ever title. And so we see her drawing on that shot again today. Casey Evans, a good dig by Bevan, the libero. Bump set to Evans again. Georgia, that's all they've got right now is Casey Evans. They're very out of system, and finally she connects. Georgia's on the board. And if she wasn't quite back to fitness before that rally, she might be now. That was a long one, and she got set a zillion times. They tend to be pretty left side dominant, uh, but Kentucky was not getting fooled in that rally. So Georgia will send its bro back, Bailey Cox, who is a freshman, two freshman Liberos in this match, Reagan Rutherford on the angle. Free ball back to the Cats. Grum goes in the middle as Johnny Teeler. And Teeler's so impressive, an undersized middle at 5'10". She can attack in front of the setter like that uh, on a quick play, but she she's unusual in that she does much of her attacking behind the setter off two feet. Kentucky up by four, going to 25 here in the opening set. That shot is long from Georgia. Kentucky started this year as the preseason number three team in the nation. They're ranked number seven right now in the coaches poll, but when the selection committee revealed their top 10 a couple weeks ago, Kentucky was number five. Another free ball. And that's gonna be advantage to Kentucky as Georgia's called for blocking the set. Courtney, that's such a tough play for blockers. They have to restrain themselves and not let their, let's see if Evan's hand, see she reaches across and she can't touch any part of the ball until some part of the ball actually breaks the plane of the net. That's really hard to restrain, restrain yourself as a blocker. 
There's a better pass. They're able to go to their middle and feed the Awalea. Yeah, Coach Tom Black says the sky is the limit for her. He thinks she could probably get three times the blocks that she she's already racking up over one point or about 1.1 per set, but she presents a ton of possibilities for them. Georgia has looked very different at times this year. They're running that 6-2 offense, so Delaney Hans has come in to serve number nine in black. She'll be the setter right now. This is the fifth straight match. They've used the 6-2, and Coach Black told us they feel like they're a little better offensively, and they get a bigger block in the front row. And Allie Stumbler just terminates. It's so hard to stop her, her third kill tonight. Yeah, she's racking them up. When she's well located, she has such a variety of shots and great hustle in the backcourt to keep things alive. But we've seen her use a roll shot. We've seen her hit deep corner. And on that one, again, just clearing the block. Service error gives a point to Georgia. How have you seen her game grow the most, talking about Ali Stumler and her time at Kentucky? Well, I was really impressed with the whole Kentucky team as they just got better and better last spring. And she turned into the go-to hitter for them as they faced a very, very difficult and tough Texas team that is looking for revenge this season as uh, maybe a possible rematch. But uh, it didn't matter how tall the blockers were. Across the net, Stumler played fearlessly throughout that last NCAA tournament. Yeah, and worked her way as into an AVCA first team All-American selection. 4.2 kills per set for Stumler last season. She's at 3.4 this season. Yeah, that, was in the something, that was something that Coach Skinner talked about, that Stumler got a slow start to this season. She was getting a little too tricky and not putting enough pace on her attacks. I think she's figured it out as Maddie Skinner, the other outside for Kentucky, goes down the line. Exactly. Speaking of pace on her attacks, Maddie Skinner was bringing the heat all last season, had to fill in as an opposite for Kentucky, and now this year playing back on the left, a position that uh, she is really seen as, as playing for the long term. Timeout to call Kentucky on top, 10 to 3. Well, four ranked teams in our women's college basketball doubleheader on Sunday afternoon. Texas taking on the defending national champs in Stanford. And then following that game, it's the home opener for the number eight Indiana Hoosiers. They're taking on Brian Howard and the Kentucky Wildcats. That's coming up on Sunday, both of those games on ESPN. Ryan Howard would be the Allie Stumbler, if you will, of the basketball world. She does it all. She literally can play the point guard or she can go post up and play the five. She is impressive if you haven't seen her play. There's Allie Stumbler with a tip out of the back row, saved by Georgia's defense. And then Emma Grove with the dump. You know, you really have to give so much of the credit to that Point one to Stumler. She created so much trouble. We call that the great zero in volleyball, meaning it's not a kill, it's not an error, it stays in play. But the next swing actually was Kentucky's because they got a free ball back thanks to her deceptive tip. And Kayla Rivera blocked by Bella Bell in the middle. Yeah, there's not a lot of room. You see two people lined up, and Maddie Skinner putting herself right where she wants to be, and then the middle can follow, and that's a great two-person block. Kentucky has been in control of this opening set. They are hitting 600. Georgia's in the negative. Phoebe Awalea has been their most consistent so far. She's got two kills now on four swings. And as you mentioned, Georgia has switched to the two-setter, like a 6-2, a two-setter offense. So they, one of the things they like about that is they're always going to have three hitters in the front row on the left, in the middle, and on the right. That, and so they, if they can get better ball control, they'll want to use that middle hitter and get one-on-one -on -one opportunities. 
The Georgia block stepping up. Sage Navis and Kayla Rivera. Up nice read blocking. Pretty easy read by the Georgia blockers. There was really only one place for Kentucky to set to, and that was Skinner. The block loaded up against her. Maddie Skinner to the corner. A nice adjustment by Skinner. The previous play, she hit it low into the block. Often not so great things happen when you hit it into blockers' elbows and armpits, but that time she went right over into the deep corner, and that takes the block right out of play. Now Skinner is their leader in kills and kills per set. Came in last year as the number two overall recruit in that top recruiting class for Craig Skinner and the Kentucky Wildcats. Yeah, when we were talking with him, he just said, look, we are recruiting to compete for SEC championships. <laughs> They've got a string of four of them. And for NCAA championships, and they're the defending champions, so they keep reloading. Skinner swinging on the right side in this rotation. Ruth Reagan Rutherford is on the left. Amber Stiffrens into the block. Hey, there's Craig Skinner in his 17th season leading this Kentucky program. Brought a national title to the SEC in volleyball for the very first time. Has done a great job with this Kentucky program. They hadn't been to the NCAA tournament since something like 1993. And the, within a year or so, he gets them back in. And now they've got a streak of 16 straight berths and uh, on the verge of a 17th here in this season. What's kind of his stamp, Karch, when you look at a Kentucky team? What does he hang his hat on? Well, uh, we already talked about one of them, and that is just recruiting a high-level player. Lots of coaches will say you, you, you can't have a lot of success if you don't get some of the better players in the country. People like Stumler on that kill and National Player of the Year, Madison Lilly, in the, in the previous season, the setter for them for the last few seasons. And so he's just raised the level of talent raised the level of program and also matched other great programs in the SEC like uh, Florida with Coach Mary Wise. Now Mary Wise at Florida has played for a national title a couple of times, but it's Kentucky who gets that title first in the SEC. And the block, the offense, everything is working right now for the Cats. Wow, Rutherford and Teeler on this block. Look, there is just nowhere to go. Those hands are way across the net. You've got to choose different places to swing, and it's and a bad one is into the forearms. Much better is into the tips of the fingers. And so there is an ace for Kentucky, and Tom Black will call a timeout as the Wildcats up by 10 points in the opening set. I want to remind you, we have two great Big Ten games to kick off college football Saturday on ABs. Coach Skinner told us there was something different about the prep, as you mentioned, Karch, and he talked to the team about that. The next day, it was a very serious mentality, and I think that's kind of stayed with Kentucky. And we've, we've talked about her some, but Ali Stumler is a real driver of that. He's talked about how um, she has been a leader in lots of ways, and certainly with her volleyball skills and her, and her uh, work ethic, but now she has to be more of an emotional leader for this team, and so that's probably the, been the biggest area of growth for her in this, in this fall 2021 season. Megan Froming with the kill off of one foot gives the serve back to Georgia and Bailey Cox will step back. Brian Walker handles that nicely. They get it over to Stumler. Casey Evans just short of that back line. You know, that's the other positive result if you're talking about a, the strong block of Kentucky. Remember what happened one of the last times it got stuffed so hard. So then hitters get that into their mind and they start trying so hard to avoid the block that they'll ma make mistakes like that and miss the court. Go, 
Tough pass, no chance at getting that one up. An easy ace for the Cats. Lauren Tharp continues her run behind the service line. And Megan Froming, the Kentucky block, says hello again for the fourth time. Kentucky clearly dialed in that they're setting up the block in good spots. That is, their wing blockers and their middles are closing, and they're just reading the setters of Georgia really well, so they're getting lots of blocks in front. There was another good block that led to a free ball eventually back to the Cats. Stumbler down the line. Allie Stumbler with her fifth kill. And that's an important shot to hit as a pin hitter, as a hitter who attacks from near the sideline, because sometimes blocks just lean so heavily into your cross court that they'll leave you the, the whole street down the line. Four straight points for the Wildcats. Devin handled that really nicely. You're right, Courtney. She sure did. So much of this game is dictated by what happens on the very first contact. It sets up the second and third so well, and that was a perfect first contact so that they could run their offense. Eleanor Bevan took over the Libero spot against Wisconsin in set number three. Wisconsin, the top team in the Big Ten right now. Not an easy stage to become the Libero, but she has grabbed that spot and has not let it go. She sure has. Been playing really consistent volleyball between her serve reception, her defense, and just her backcourt leadership. Six straight points now for Kentucky. Chrome goes backside to Teeler, and it's blocked. But even on that play, Kentucky with another positive block touch. They have the advantage in that. You see that set went a little wide, uh, farther outside the sideline than Teeler would have expected, and, and that led to her getting blocked. Grom tries her again. Was that better? Yes, much better located. It did not go wide. You try to have setters never set the ball wide, even leave it a little inside. It's easier for hitters to go get. Set point, Kentucky. This is Allie Stumbler back to serve. She's got six kills in the opening set. Awalea in the middle. Still set point for UK. Really tight. Wow, Maddie Skinner swiped that off the block. It was a tight set, but she made it into a point, and it's the point Kentucky needed to take the opening set 25 to 10. Kentucky hitting 481 to start this match. They take the opening. Turning from that national title team, their first ever, and SEC's first ever, that they have the experience. Obviously, they've had to replace at least one huge part, and she's doing a really nice job this season and tonight. That's their setter, Emma Grom, who's filled in for National Player of the Year, Madison Lilly. And that, that'll be a question mark for them as they get deeper into the end of the SEC season and, and looking forward to the national, uh, to the NCAA tournament itself. But they've got lots of the pieces that they need with so many returners. It's been impressive to watch Kentucky so far. Remember, they are at the top of the SEC standings right now and have been there for 724 straight 
days. Shout out to Chris Scholes, their sports information director, for keeping count as there's an ace from Raya Walker. And that ace is really the story of this match so far, Courtney. Kentucky is absolutely dominating at the service line, and there's another poor pass, so there's no offense for Georgia to win. Their only effective hitters or efficient hitters so far have been Alvalaya and um, and Froming in the middle, and they just can't get the or sorry novice in the middle, and they just cannot get the ball to them because their first touch is not giving the setter. That's a little better, so the setter can actually set their middle. And they go back to her, and you see how effective Phoebe Alalea can be. But as you said, Karch, the pass has got to be there. Yeah, if you have that first contact, then they would want to just set her every single ball because Kentucky, that's one the, really the only player that they've struggled to slow down. When they get that pass, it's a much better offense. They always have three hitters available in the front row. But when they don't have that pass, it becomes... It, that really it, it breaks down into just one option often setting the left side hitter and we saw that that wasn't working very well in set number one yeah georgia hitting in the negative and you saw phoebe alalea served and then she rotates out so it's sage novice in the middle right now that's amber stiverens on the outside in the middle of johnny teeler well done by Kentucky, but it started again with a tough serve, and so there was only one place for Georgia to set. That makes the transition play much easier for Kentucky, leading to another kill. Very similar to how the first set started. Kentucky jumped out to an early lead and then won it 25 to 10. There's Sage Navas in the middle throwing one down. We've been given Bevin some props. That time, that was a mistake. Pretty easy first ball play for her, and she put it back over the net. She has a very strong freshman setter to work with, and so you want to give her a couple of feet of space so she can run her offense. Backside to Rutherford. It'll be a bump set to Stiverens. Down the line. And that wasn't the easiest set for Stiverens to attack, but she found the open space by running in, getting her feet to the ball, and clearing the block. They've been having trouble even getting it past the Kentucky right side block. And Reagan Rutherford is going to get another chance and take advantage. That she does. You're seeing plenty of that we see it on our USA team also there's something really effective and helpful to have a left-handed hitter on the right side of the court with her attacking shoulder uh, closer to the setter Stiffords dug up by Lauren Tharp Brower back outside to Stiverance. Nice job. Casey Evans got underneath it, but it goes out and a kill for Allie Stumbler, who had six kills in the opening set and no errors. Yeah, she has come out hot, hitting 538, and uh, Georgia has no answer for her. And I think part of it is just the, the strong setting of Grom and also a wide variety of shot locations and speeds that Stumbler's mixing in. And we have seen all of Ali Stumbler's, almost all of her toolkit today, and it's helped her have those seven kills. That's going to be four contacts on Georgia. Yeah, when you talk about a hitter hitting with range, we have seen that from Stumbler. We've seen her hit really sharp cross court. We would call that zone four to zone four of a four to four really sharp cross court. Hit. And at the far other side of that spectrum, or that range is hitting down the line, she see, she's gotten kills there too. That's a Johnny Teeler and hit the antenna, Point Georgia. 
And that's something that's unique. Her, uh, Coach Skinner talked about how hard she has to work in transition to go hit that kind of set. Not a slide off one foot uh, in her jump, but actually using two feet to jump. And she was, she worked, her work set her up for a kill on that one, but she hit the antenna. And there she goes again on that right side. And remember, Ajani Teeler, we've seen her, I feel like, play at all three spots in the front row in her Kentucky career. But she started as a right side and moved over to the middle last year. Yeah, you just don't see that many five foot ten middles at the top <laughs> levels of Division I women's volleyball. But it just tells you how absolutely physical and, and explosive she is. Dropped it in, Casey Evans. That's what Georgia's looking for more of from their primary weapon. Hitting it inside the block of Teal. Georgia hitting 167 in this set. They were hitting negative in the opening set. Maddie Skinner crushed it. Right, 167 is a, a significant improvement over going minus in the first one. So Georgia on the upswing, and it starts with a little better first contact. Let's see how this passes. That's a better one, and they can set the middle and cause trouble for Kentucky. Yeah, and Awalea back in there in the middle for Georgia. She's been the most effective. Four kills, no errors. Skinner, that was smart. It really was, and it's especially smart because she has a cannon of an arm. And when you hit that hard, it means people play on their heels. And then when they're on their heels, you mix in the roll shot or the tip. Kentucky up by five points in the second set. They're at home against Georgia. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Memorial Coliseum hosting the number seven team in the nation, the Kentucky Wildcats at home. Courtney Lyle and U.S. Women's National Team head coach Karch Karai on the call with you for this one. Kentucky dominated the opening set. Georgia hit negative, but we have seen a little bit of a spark from the Georgia Bulldogs here in set number two. They are trailing by five, but they're digging out of hitting in the negative. And that one will drop in for Megan Froming. And that last time out for Georgia, you could really see Tom Black gathering this team and try and get them refocused. Yeah, Courtney, it is so difficult. If you go out, it doesn't matter how good you are. When you go out and lose 25-10, it's, it's just sometimes hard to continue to bring a really positive and strong demeanor. I was impressed with with what Coach Black did in that last time out. And that's exactly what his team needs is uh, lots of hope and, lot of, and a strong, poised presence. Casey Evans, who just took a swing on that one, she is their captain on the court. And you can see the emotion and the energy that she brings. She's going to be a key piece of that, too, for Coach Black. Yeah, she goes nuts when, especially, I love it when somebody goes nuts for her teammates. Cheers even harder when they have success than when they do. And of course, full disclosure, I got to work uh, for a number of years with Coach Tom Black as he was one of our assistant coaches for the previous Olympic quad, so I got to know him really well. And it's no surprise that he's able to, to bring that strength and that poise to his team after a rough first set has led the Canadian national team as well. Seven seasons at Loyola Marymount before coming over to this Georgia program. 16 seasons as a head coach. And there's an ace. The service pressure has been just so tough for Georgia to handle. It really has. Georgia has had great difficulty controlling it to where they could at least set to, t to either sideline. Let's see if Georgia can come back. There is a much better touch. Now they have three hitters to choose from, and they get the, the kill and the point. 
Yeah, they go to Casey Evans, who was swinging on the right pin in that rotation. Just Your her odds third of kill. winning the point, Courtney, are just they change dramatically when you can't involve your middle in your offense anymore. And that's what Georgia has struggled to do in this match, thanks to the great serving of Kentucky. Connection a little bit off, but Bella Bell is going to get that kill anyway. You're right, a little high, but I love it when hitters recognize it's not quite there and they still make something positive happen. Hans to Stiverens. Stumbler. Still perfect. Talking about making something out of nothing. That was not the easiest swing for Stumbler. A scramble play, and she had to run way inside, but found a hole between the block. She's hitting 500 tonight. Back corner, Kayla Rivera. And off the strong pass, the front, strong first contact of Stiverens, Georgia is set up to run their offense. They have three hitters, three threats that the Kentucky block has to worry about. So Kentucky didn't have near the block that they would want to. And as we said, Georgia would always have those three threats in the front row because they run that 6-2 offense. But the story has been the pass. <laughs> Novice. Wow, I love that play by Casey Evans. She made it. She had to scramble in. They weren't sure who was going to touch it. Look at how she got on the floor and got her setter a good enough contact to run the best offense that they can run in this match, and that is to set their middles. Now, Casey Evans, the 2019 SEC Freshman of the Year, never comes out of the match for Georgia. That's a good view of a set that falls inside. That's something that Grohm's working on to locate the ball better. Bella Bell took it to the left. Yeah, I like it when we work in that end zone view. That's the view that coaches and players always look at. There's a scout cam, and you get to see the, I get that you get the best sense of the lateral movement and of how teams use the width of the court from sideline to sideline. Evans hustling again to get it back over, and it's going to be just short. Kentucky up 16-10 here in the second set. They took the opening set 25-10. And when a play like that happens, that's strictly a, an error of communication. People are not having enough clarity to know who's got to put that ball back over and keep it in play. Stiverns will take that off the block. Yep, that's another great answer. When you have the strong block of Rutherford and Teeler or some of the other blockers that Kentucky has at the net, turn that strength into your strength and tap it into the block, maybe recycle it, get it back on your side, or, like that play, tap it into the block and, and deflect it out of bounds. Clara Brower has rotated in. She'll set now for Georgia. There's another great zero. Easy ball back for Kentucky as it stayed in play. And Rutherford hits it off the block. She has three kills, no errors. Yep, earlier in the rally, Stumler takes the great swing, and then that makes it so easy for Kentucky as they get a free ball back. And now they have three hitters running at the Georgia block. Kentucky hitting 431 for the match. Those middle hitters for Georgia, they are seven kills and only one error between them, basically as a pair hitting around 
or hitting above 500. When Georgia can get that good first contact and put their setter in a reasonable position close to the net, middle of the court, good things are happening. Allie Stumbler up to nine kills. Six of those came in the opening set. Kentucky trying to make sure they take care of business at every turn. They dropped their first match in SEC play last week, last Thursday, to South Carolina. But they're looking for their fifth straight SEC title, and they've got some big matches coming up. They need all of these wins to keep that going. Well, what a college basketball game we have for you Friday night. Number four, Villanova. Number two, UCLA. Our top five West Coast primetime matchup starts at 11.30 Eastern, 8.30 Pacific on ESPN2 and the app, one app, one tap. Well, we mentioned Allie Stumbler. Karch tonight, nine kills, no errors. She's hitting 450 from the outside. She really is. She's having a great match, and she got off to a little bit of a slower start this season, but Coach Skinner gives her a ton of credit for becoming a stronger emotional leader for them, but also just making better choices as a hitter. And one of the things, you know, when we look at swings like these, those are kills. So we could call those the pluses. Each one turns into a direct point. When you make a direct point for the other team, you could call that a minus. And what we didn't see in that package, but we have seen for, or in this package, but we have seen for Skinner is she's had some great swings that were almost kills. We, I'd call them great zeros, and it gets an easy ball back. She's had two or three or four of those, and when hitters can get more of those and fewer of the minuses, they, they turn, uh, they swing the odds greatly toward their offense and toward their team's success. Alice Summer also a finalist for the Senior Class Award, which takes into account your performance on the court and also off the court in the classroom and the community. That was just announced in the last few days. She will step back to serve as Kentucky tries to take the second set from Georgia. They're up 18 to 12, we played a 25. Look at Stumbler. Oh, excuse me, that was Lauren Tharp sliding in on the pancake. <laughs> Thrown down by Novice. Wow, what great defense by Kentucky. Georgia really excited to get that point, but boy, did Kentucky make them work for it. Great hustle. Saw Maddie Skinner eventually in that play, also chase it down. Finally on the fourth try, Georgia gets the point. Now Georgia has climbed out of the negative in this set. They were now hitting 258 in set number two, but Kentucky's offense is rocking also. They're hitting over 400. You have Kentucky around 400, Georgia at 258, and that, and really so much of that six point difference you see on the scoreboard comes from the tougher serving and attacking of Kentucky, and it's just hard to set the Georgia setters up for success running their offense. McGrown, the setter on the swing for Kentucky. Evans right at Stumbler. Stumbler, two of them this rally. Lauren Tharp. And Emma Grone is going to get it on the setter dump. I tell you, it is so frustrating as hitters. Sometimes you take these great swings. And he just, they're so pesky on defense, really impressed with the defense and the hustle of Kentucky. We talked about it at the opening of the show. Coach Skinner said, look, we have to improve our focus. And boy, have they done that. They, their focus fell down and lagged against South Carolina last week for that loss. But 
they seem dialed in from start right to the last point so far this match. Yeah, in all areas of their game, too, their defense, their offense, and that was their seventh block of the match. Service error by Ajani Teeler. Very few service errors in this match so far. Only one for Georgia, two for Kentucky. It's impressive that Georgia, or sorry, that Kentucky can serve that tough, cause that much trouble, and only have had two service errors. They're checking something at the scorer's table right now. Delaney Hans is waiting to serve for Georgia. Might have been double checking a rotation, make sure that everyone was lined up correctly. Service error. I guess I jinxed it. Yeah, <laughs> that's on you. <laughs> they just doubled the service errors for the match in the last yes. two serves. <laughs> But you know, Courtney, you, you have to have some. If you're serving in every single time, then you're just serving too easily. It'd be like a softball pitcher who throws strikes every single time. You, you've got to take some chances and, and make hitters guess. Bella Bell, middle attack for the Cats. They need two points for the set. And the key there, again, a first touch. You see how Stumler, you see how high she put that ball up? That gives her middle the time that she needs to transition and get the proper approach. Free ball back to Kentucky. Grom to Rutherford, ouch! Set point, Cats. Side to Evans. Out of bounds, Kentucky takes set two, 25 to 14. Kentucky at the top of the SEC, they're one set away from their 11th win in conference play. That's a great question, and boy, you're gonna have a great one to work, Courtney. That match at Pittsburgh and I got to watch the the first matchup that was at Louisville it went down late in the fifth game Louisville pulled it out but it never hurts to have a little home home crowd to help you out Pittsburgh looking for revenge on that second matchup yeah that'll be a big one of course Louisville has Georgia Tech coming up this Friday it is important to know when we had the selection committee top 10 reveal cards they had Louisville at number one they felt like their body of work put them at the top now that was a couple weeks ago you're right in terms of body of work of course that schedule we just shot, showed on the screen is not easy and it's not only the pittsburgh match that louisville faces as they finish out that acc season but of course if they win out they put themselves in a great position to, for a number one seed in the ncaa tournament and that means they can host a regional you know, host the first four rounds of the tournament have the top four seeds, if they win their first and second rounds, get to host a regional. So you want to be in that top four grouping. Kentucky, important to note, was number five in that selection committee's top ten reveal two weeks ago. Well, it's been all Kentucky in this match. Georgia hit negative in the opening set. Kentucky won at 25 to 10. Bulldogs got a little bit more rhythm in that second set, but only when the pass is there and it hasn't been there consistently. That's really been the struggle for Georgia is can they make a pass? Even that one, that pass that Kentucky just made with the setter on the run, they still could set to a hitter at either sideline. So what's trouble for Kentucky 
still gives them great swings like that one from Stumler. Again, the great zero, and again, confusion on the Georgia side, so they can't get that third contact over. This is a must-win set for Georgia, or Kentucky will get the sweep. And Bailey Cox, the libero for Georgia. Quick shoe tying pause. And here we go, Lauren Tharp behind the service line. What a save. Evans into the Kentucky block, their eighth stuff of the match. And a key in that rally was Stumler. She didn't have a great swing, but where did she put it? She put it actually onto the setter for Georgia. So they had to have a non-setter make the second contact. It didn't go where they wanted to. Much tougher swing. And that's nothing that shows up on the stat sheet. That's Ali Stumbler being a fantastic volleyball player. Exactly. Grum tried her hardest, but that one went over and dropped out. I love the hustle of Grum again. Coach Skinner talked about it. I think we spoke to him yesterday, and he, and he said, you know what, even on Monday, there, we still had room to improve, whether it's playing Pepper early in the practice or whether it's the last activity, maybe some six-on-six six in practice. We're trying to hold an incredibly high standard. That's what helped us win our first-ever NCAA title, and we got to stick with those, and if we let up, we're going to pay, and they learned that lesson against South Carolina that last week. Uh, Craig Skinner has pulled his challenge card. First time that we have had a challenge in the match. They're looking to see if this ball was in. The original call was that it dropped out. But if it hits the line, it's in. It is, and what people, what's sometimes hard to take into account, especially when you're watching it in live action as a referee or as a lines person is, the ball actually squishes down and flattens a little, and, and so it touches a good area on the ground, and if it, on the court, and if it touches any part of that line, that ball is in. So they overturn the call. Craig Skinner will get to keep his challenge. He'll have two remaining. And that point goes to Kentucky. Give Rome so much of the credit with her hustle to chase that ball down on her second contact. I love I love talking to Craig Skinner about Emma Grum because you could see like he knows how good her game can be. She still has three years of volleyball to play at Kentucky. And he told us she's a volleyball junkie, has always been into it, and is really starting to learn how to use film to help her game and get that feedback. Just wait yep. till year four. And he also gave her props just in terms of setting, for example, quick hitters in front of her, not necessarily behind, but but one sets and three sets, or however you want to call them. She said she's even ahead of where National Player of the Year Madison Lilly was at that point in her career and running certain sets in the Kentucky offense. Yeah, he told us she just has a feel for it, and he loves to be able to build off of that. And there goes Ajani Teeler from the right side. And Courtney, this is an example of an imperfect pass that goes to about 11, 12 feet off the net, but it's high enough where Grote can, uh, sorry, Grome can at least set behind her to one sideline or at least set in front of her. So she has two hitters to work with. Too often for Georgia, they've only had one option to set. 
Brittany Skinner. She has eight kills, second for Kentucky tonight. Maddie Skinner's sister, Avery Skinner, of course, was on that national championship team for Kentucky, has since transferred to Baylor who, and helped them knock off Texas this past weekend. You're right, her sister Avery was really solid in those two matches, both the loss to Texas and then in the win in the rematch the next night. Skinner, perfect lineup. You have to choose, ooh, and a to watch out in the celebration, but when you're a blocker and you have a hitter hitting a slide like that, she runs very and jumps through the air laterally, so it's really important to pick the right place on the court to set up your block. Skinner executed that perfectly on that previous play. Yeah, you never want to celebrate it and then fall backwards into a roll. <laughs> Not intended. <laughs> Novice tacks on a point for Georgia, Georgia to send Amber Stiverens to serve. Skinner, ooh, stop Sage Novice! Well executed by Georgia. When you have a set that's this close, and that's a little too close to the net, you can see contacts only about a foot away. You don't want to let a hitter off the hook. Georgia blocked. Did, they definitely did not put their hands in a great spot. Skinner a little further off the net that time. And that's one of the challenges for somebody like Emma Grum, Kentucky's freshman setter, is how often, how consistently can I locate my hitters? and so that it's not too close, six inches or a foot off the net, and it's not too far off, five or six feet. Novice just had to poke that one almost, and it went too far. There's Johnny Teeler behind the service line. Casey Evans, haven't said her name in a minute. Yeah, and you can, the more people get to say her name when she gets kills, the primary reason she's going to get that is just because they con uh, control the, pa the serve of Kentucky better, and so uh, there's more mystery to their offense and more threats. Nice up. There's Evans off of the bump set. Yep, they got Evans a little better matchup here against Rome and Bell. Earlier in the match, we saw a tougher matchup with Kentucky's opposite Rutherford and their middle Teeler, and they were just a wall. Yeah, the block was really challenging this Georgia offense. And right now, Casey is feeling it. Just give her the ball. Making some nice choices to go inside the block and Kentucky not adjusting. Not getting a defender in that cross court area as much as they could. Lauren Tharp with a nice pass. Maddie Skinner. That's such a good habit for hitters to get into, to hit the last three or four feet of the court. Because you see, defenders never stand near there. They're way inside, and the ball will often go over their head. It's just very difficult to control those attacks.
from our 50 yard line camera, we had a great view that time of a set that actually drifted off the net from Grom. Grum trying to go in the middle to Bella Bell. And it's going to be a point for Georgia. It's a one point third set. Again, a little misconnect. Grom thought that her hitter was going to be a little farther away from her. Maddie Skinner on the outside. And a free ball back to Kentucky. Skinner take two down the line. Down the line and only about three feet from that sideline. Nobody in a great spot. You just don't play for a ball that deep. You can't because most hitters are not going to have that kind of good habit to hit the edges of the court. Here comes Stumbler. Got a touch. Wow, what a set by Emma Grome. She had to run, sprint across. First, she comes up with the dig. Some trouble. But watch Grome. She was sprinting and had her back. To Ali Stumler put her in a great position for the kill. Georgia pushing Kentucky more than they have all match, and it started when they got Casey Evans going earlier in this set. Kentucky pretty resilient, though. Kentucky up by four, looking for a win in this set, and they win the match. on ESPN. Want to remind you, we've got four ranked teams on our in our doubleheader on Sunday, Texas, and the defending national champion, number three, Stanford, at three, Eastern. That's followed by number eight, Indiana, and number 13, Kentucky. Both of these games on ESPN and the ESPN app. Courtney Lyle, Karch Karai with you. Memorial Coliseum is the site. Kentucky taking on Georgia, and the Wildcats have dominated. Georgia pushing them a little bit more than they have previously here in set number three. Phoebe Alwalea, you know, she's looked good all match. She sure has. Whenever they get their set or close to the net, they're looking to set her. She has been what we would call junking at around some. That is throwing it with an open hand. But this is no junk. That's just sheer heat. And that's a good choice on that set and that play with the blockers in front of her. And it must be contagious because now Amber Stiffer ends with a kill off the block. There seems to be a little more momentum, a little more energy on the Georgia side of the net than we've seen. For sure. And both those left side hitters, Casey Evans and Amber Stiverens, started out hitting negative. They've pulled their way up into the positive and finding their most success in this third set. Grown to Stumbler. Rutherford has to chase it. Bumps that to Stiverance. Oh my goodness, Eleanor, Eleanor Bevan. And then Grome. Rutherford. It, but how about the defense we saw in that rally? Great defense, great hustle.
But ultimately, the next to last swing, the one that Allie Stumler took, got her team a free ball back and a perfectly executed play that could have been set anywhere. Good choice by Grom to get her left-handed opposite Rutherford going. And Ajani Teeler just eats that up in the middle. Yeah, you don't want to put the ball, once that ball breaks the plane of the net, she can stuff it down. So that's a, yet another reason to keep the ball two or three feet off the net. This is a tough play now, a broken play for Georgia. Off of the net, it did not hit a Kentucky blocker, so the Cats will take that point. Every time Georgia gets close, Kentucky seems to have a surge. They're able to throw that punch right back. Kayla Rivera tooling the block. Nicely executed by Rivera, and if you just watch the Georgia players, I, I see them looking each other in the eye, staying tall. That's not easy to do after losing the first two and being down four here, but they are still alive if they can keep chipping away and keep it close. Try to force Kentucky out of the ability to keep responding, as you mentioned there. I've got something going with Reagan Rutherford right now. She tours that block, it comes back across the net and drops out for the point. Sage Navis. Kentucky's had a lot of free ball chances this evening. That one gets caught up in the block, a kill for Georgia. Often the indication when a ball falls between the blocker and the net, the, the cause of that is a couple of things. Either the blocker doesn't get her hands across or the timing is off. And on that play, Teeler wasn't able to get her hands across where they needed to be. Blown to Stumbler. That was a nice connection. It sure was. That would be that set that Stumbler was hitting. We call it a go. And it was located eh, about two, three feet off the net in the perfect distance away so that Stumbler not only has a great swing but has the best vision on the block. Ali Stumbler still has no attacking errors. Maddie Skinner looking for a touch, won't get it. She got one on, on the linesman, but uh, not on the block. <laughs> that, that shows you the kind of heat that she can deliver. What happened on that, whoa, watch out. But what happened on that is she just didn't get any top spin on the ball. That was a missed contact. Maddie Skinner, just a sophomore, but was a AVCA All-American honorable mention last year. Ooh, that's just spicy from Johnny Teeler. Yeah, meanwhile, the second team All-American, and this set is just the right height, just the right width, and just the right location off the net. So Teeler with an easy swing and a late arriving middle. Kentucky really makes defenses work because they have weapons and they move her around, just like that was Teeler, who is a middle, swinging off of two feet on the right side. Tight set, touch the antenna, it's out. Exactly right, that ball went idle. They're going to have to continue to uh, dial in that focus that Coach Skinner was talking about that they lost a little of against in that first South Carolina match. Right, Kentucky's got so many weapons on the volleyball court and also on the basketball court. I mean, you see the Kentucky women's basketball team there. In the middle is Ryan Howard, the SEC Player of the Year, an All-American. Already one of the greats at Kentucky. We'll see her in action over on ESPN coming up this Sunday at 5 Eastern as Kentucky takes on Indiana. But she wants to see this top 10 volleyball team in action too. 
All right, look at the energy from Georgia. Big energy from Georgia, but I, I, I love it when you have those fall teams coming out, basketball team cheering for the volleyball team, vice versa. It's great when you have that kind of school camaraderie. Yeah, absolutely, and that's a lot of the women's basketball team in the stands right now. Maddie Skinner. Did they get a double contact? Yes. I think it's the first time we've had one of those called tonight. Yep, and the usual reason why is a really high spinning dig. And that one, there was so much time and so much spin, Rome couldn't, couldn't get a good contact. Maddie Skinner now has 12 kills. Skinner and Stumbler both in double figures. And you like to see that response from a freshman. She makes a, a contact mistake. Where does she go? She makes the longest set, the one that might cause a double contact the next time. Great confidence and goes right back to setting it out to the left side. How hard is it, Karch? I mean, we're talking about a freshman coming in. It's hard to adjust to the college game anyway, but to be a setter and to be a starting freshman setter, how difficult is that? And to be a starting setter, to fill the shoes of the <laughs> National Player of the Year for the team that is the reigning NCAA titleist. Not, not easy, but with the talent around her and the coaching staff that they have, uh, and the learning environment, the teaching and learning environment they have, she, they're setting her up for success, and she's setting herself up for su success, being that total volleyball junkie like uh, Coach Skinner describes her. Now she's helped Kentucky hit 285 on the season. That is ninth in the nation, second in the SEC. Stumbler makes it look too easy. She's now at 15 kills and still no attacking errors. Match point, Kentucky. Attack is wide, and it's a quick night for Kentucky on this Wednesday. A sweep of Georgia, their 11th win in SEC play. Really impressive focus by Kentucky. And Kentucky comes out and hits 4-16 for the...